It's time for a Big Blue Kickoff Live. Nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it because you're dead. On Giants.com. You know what I saw? New York Giant Prime. And the Giants mobile app. 17-14 is the final. One touchdown, we are world champions. Believe it, and it will happen. Part of the Giants Podcast Network. Let's go on there like a bunch of crazy dogs. Have some fun. Hello, everybody, and happy Tuesday. Welcome to Big Blue Kickoff Live on the Giants app, Giants.com. It's all brought to you by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football Giants. I am John Schmelk. Madeline Berg, a little bit under the weather today. I'm stepping in for her, and I get to deal with the big man, Howard Cross. Not as cute, I must say. <laughs> I'm hurt. <laughs> Not really. You're all right, man. You know. You're... I'm freshly shaved today. I don't have any <laughs> stubble. Uh, I got a lot of stubble. I, I have my shaved. fancy hoodie. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I think I'm doing okay. I'm going to be honest it. with you. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to try to get a lot of your calls today, folks. So, so get on the line, 201-939-4513. We're kind of in no man's land here, Howard. We're like five days after the Giants' last game. Mm-hmm. I guess four days. But we're yep. five days before the next game coming up on Sunday. So we're kind of in no man's land here so where, so where do you sit right now kind of through four games as we kind of take stock of the Giants a quarter of the way through the season well I sit in a spot where we're a little bit confused because we've had some great opportunities we didn't take advantage of um, and, and it you know it's kind of one of those things where you're a little bit frustrated and you're not really sure you know what to feel and everything the offense is progressively getting better and better but the untimely mistakes have dropped balls here and there Daniel's looking stronger and stronger although I will Keep an eye on him. I'll tell people all the time, he is still not a year out of that surgery for his knee. That that still worries me to death when he's running and doing all this stuff. But hopefully, you know, he continues to hang in there. He's a tough guy. Uh, the defense, kind of a mixed bag there. I mean, sometimes they're playing extraordinarily well. Uh, we know that when we get faced with some of the top receivers in, in the league, we're going to have – you know, if there's more than one guy out there, we're going to have a little bit of a problem. The pass rush has been good, and then it's been silent. And then it's been good, and then it's been silent. That goes back to the inconsistency you're talking about, <laughs> yeah, right? So no, I'm with you. we got to got to find a way to get some of that in. Uh, we've had a couple blunders on special teams um, that lost our kicker up right off the bat, first, you know, first play of the game. Um, then after that, you know, it's, it's starting to – like I said, it, you can see enough positive things to think that, hey, there are going to be some teams and some games that we're going to sneak up on some guys and get them. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's up yet, um, but I recorded a uh, Giants podcast with Banks a little bit earlier today. Mm-hmm. And I, the way I kind of put it to him, I'm not sure if it's up yet. It should be shortly if it's not. Is it up, Dom? It is? Perfect. Mm-hmm. So the kind of way I put it to him, Howard, was the Giants are 1-3. It's the same record as last year. But the and look, there are no moral victories here. One and three is Zero. one and three. Yep. Zero. <laughs> but the one and three does feel a little bit different as you watch it. Like heading into week five last year against the Dolphins at one and three with the way the team look, look, all of us knew that was gonna be a rough game. <laughs> I, I, I think you yeah. feel a little bit better about the way they've competed and the way they've kept game close through four games this year at one and three than you did at one and three four games last year. Absolutely. I think, you know, like the the addition of Malik Neighbors and the other rookies on the team, especially on the defensive side of the ball, has made a big impact all the way around. I think, uh, you know, you're looking at at Neighbors kind of leading all uh, rookie receivers, being kind of that that spark plug that that really starts to ignite everything is really, really cool. Uh, Wanting somebody else to, you know, kind of, you know, take the reins. I know we have... Uh, Robinson has been doing a little bit of that, but just wanting a couple more guys to take the reins and make the step up so when it's time, you know, to go, I think they'll be, like, real, really ready to go. The thing that I notice, like, in, in games, like, it's interesting to watch the receivers. When Daniel breaks the pocket, some of them stop because they think he's going to run. And I'm like, you just got to keep moving, keep moving. Get across the field. Get in his face. Get where you can see him. And I do think he's done a better job throwing on the run this year than he has in other years when he has been more kind of run first. Well, I think, again, he's less than 12 yeah, months out. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think he has only a few runs in him per game, and I think that's I think that's the biggest cause of that. What do you think of the offensive line's play so far this year? 
Uh, compared to years in the past, they would be like the five pro bowlers. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> no. Well, I would say in, in past pro specifically. Yeah, yeah, very, 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 very much so. I think past pro, they, they've done a great job. They're picking up all the twists. Uh, they're, they're picking up some, some of the stunts. They're also picking up some of the blitzes that are coming in. And the quarterbacks under are not under siege every play. You can tell in the in the pass game and in the run game, uh, even though we didn't like we got a lot a lot done in the run game, the guys weren't getting tackled in the backfield. They may be getting tackled for one yard or, or zero yards, but they weren't getting tackled in the backfield. That's a good they point. Were, and they weren't losing losing yards on play. So that's you know, that's the one thing where we can always grow uh, as a team. I think the tight ends are getting better and better. And I think a lot of it is, you know, when you see these these yardages that they're getting, especially in the last game, it wasn't that it, they weren't running the ball well. It was just like every time they had a big run, there would be a big penalty. And some of the penalties, hmm, suspect to say the least. And I, and I love, I got a bunch of buddies that are refs, but man, we had a face mask where the, the other player was face masking us. We've had a holding call when the player was driving somebody into the ground. You Both were on Bellinger, yeah. believe it or not. You can't, you can't really hold somebody when you're knocking them down. So, so I can hold him up to make sure he doesn't fall. I don't know how they're looking at it. I mean, it there was no pull of the jersey on either one of those, and it's just the un, the untimely penalty like that has really pulled back some plays that, that weren't really like 20-plus 20, 20 yard runs. All right, last thing I'll ask you before we get to the calls. We got people calling in here. Mm-hmm. If there are one, two, or three things, you can list as many as you want, that you think this team needs to improve upon in order to start turning these close losses into wins, mm-hmm. what would they be for you? The, the simple thing is this. Uh, I like the receivers. I think they have to be just – and they're great. They're getting a lot of targets, but they're going to have to be a little bit more consistent. And that's that's just it. Catching the football you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you have to be a little bit more consistent. The guys are getting open. you got to be a little more consistent. Uh, in the running game, we're going to have to find somebody – I mean – and Singletary is great, by the way. But you to start that first that first down and ten should be second down and four. <laughs> if you can get it, second down and six. If you can get it, we got to get better production out of our run game, especially on first downs. And then, real quickly, Seahawks next week. We saw them play last night mm-hmm. national TV. High scoring affair. The Seahawks offense looks very impressive. From Geno's playing great. Uh, Kenneth Walker have had some really nice yeah. runs in that game. Uh, their wide receivers, DK Metcalf, Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, we know about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler Lockett, they're good. Uh, defensively, another story. Uh, Jared Goff still hasn't thrown an incomplete pass. <laughs> He's 18 for 18, and this isn't like for 150 yards either. He almost got the three bills in the game. Uh, they could not stop the Lions offense. Lions ran on him, too. And a lot of that, quite frankly, how it had to do with the injuries on defense. Their best yeah. edge rusher, Boy Mafe out. Their two best defensive tackles, Byron Murphy and Leonard Williams, both missed the game. Mm-hmm. One of their starting linebackers, Joan Baker, missed the game. Their other edge rusher, Uchenna Nwosu, missed the game. So okay. we'll see. You know, it's only another four, another you know six days because it's a short week because <laughs> yeah. Monday into Sunday. We'll see whether or not these guys can make it back for the game on Sunday against the Giants. But if they don't, I think the Giants' offense should have some opportunities here, given how banged up that Seahawks defense is. I, I, you know, the interior run game should be should pick up for us a little bit. I think the edges are still a little tight, but the, the interior run game should pick up for us a little bit. Without those two guys in the middle, it, it looks a little clear. The, the, the pitcher looks a little clear, and I think we can get the ball moved upfield pretty easily. Then again, we said that last week against the Cowboys run defense, too, and that didn't work too well. Well, that was different. I think that the Dallas run defense became something that I hadn't seen uh, out of them in a while. They had eight guys at the line of scrimmage or sometimes, almost nine, and you, you got to be able to throw the ball in those cases and, and stretch the field, and that's what we kind of wound up doing. But the thing that was really impressive, the coach didn't go away from the run. He just kept putting it in there, even though they were like right on top of him. And the one place where I think the Seahawks offense has struggled a little bit, Howard, has been on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stone Forsythe at right tackle has not played that well this year. Charles Cross on the left side has has been okay. Mm-hmm. But even their interior guys, uh, they, they've struggled a little bit inside, to be totally honest with you. So, um, Lincoln Tomlinson, who's a veteran in this league for a long time, mm-hmm. Anthony Bradford at guard, um, those are their two interior guys that have had some struggles this year. So, I think you might be able to get some pass rush, specifically off, off right tackle and on mm-hmm. the interior 
earlier in this game. And you got to and look, Gio's gotten better at navigating through pressure and yeah. throwing on the move and throwing on the pressure. But if you're going to slow that Seahawks offense down, I think that's how you're going to have to do it. Well, you know, we, we, we hope that we can get pressure on a quarterback. You know, pressure on a quarterback has to be kind of like week to week. Again, don't know why or, or what happens. But if we, if we can get those guys just to come off the edge and just to push them up into Dexter, it's going to be a good day. we got to get somebody that's consistently running. Nacho's been playing pretty good, but consistently getting pressure besides Dex. That will help. All right, 201-939-4513. I mentioned the John Soto podcast. Most recent episode, uh, we had Papa's perspective called yesterday. He talked to uh, Brent Musburger, who covered the Giants 86, Super Bowl 21 victory. Pretty good. So he has some really nice stories in there with Bob Papa, some that he's never told before, uh, some really interesting stuff. And we have other really nice Papa's perspectives coming down the line of guys that called all the Giants big games in Super Bowl. So That's nice. it should be fun. <laughs> um, Joe Buck. Troy Aikman, mm-hmm. we already have those done. Al Michaels, that's already Al done Michaels, as well. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're still working on Chris Collinsworth, but we have a lot of good stuff uh, coming down the pike here uh, as we look back at uh, some of the great moments in Giants history as we celebrate the Giants 100. Mm-hmm. And then the most recent episode that just went up uh, should be up there. If not, it will be shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked to Carl Banks for about 20 minutes about the Giants at the quarter season mark, kind of see where we're at. Mm-hmm. So check that out on the Giants Huddle podcast giants app giants.com slash podcast just search for giants huddle or search for giants podcast network um that is the name of the feed now though it's the same old giants huddle feed all right 201-939-4513 dj in virginia will lead us off today dj how we doing dj hey what's going on guys we're good good hey all right i appreciate the show man appreciate everything you guys do thank you for listening all right so i got two questions uh one is about dayball and the play calling and last week's game against dallas Mm -hmm. Uh, So my issue with it is I understand Dable is a good play caller and I understand all that stuff, but I kind of was like looking back at the game and I'm kind of like wondering if I feel like he kind of played into Dallas's strength a little bit. Like I understand, you know, hey, you want to get the ball out fast and you want to get it in your playmaker's hands. You know, you want to kind of avoid the pass rush of Dallas just because they're kind of fast. But when you look at some of the plays, like Obershawn was covering uh, Malik on a whip route and, you know what I mean, he's, he's a fast linebacker. So I'm wondering why we didn't go with, like, a more heavy personnel, you know, run the ball. Dallas's, you know, weakness was their run defense. Am I not correct on that? No, I mean, I think the Giants tried. The, they ran it 24 times. 24 they, times they averaged, 26 yards. They averaged one yard per carry. And, <laughs> I, and I think, and honestly, look, they, they tried to keep going back to it. Howard mentioned this yeah. earlier in the show. But eventually you get to the point you're down, you know, a score or two late and you're still averaging one yard per carry. And they, their longest run in the yard was five was five yards. Yeah, the, they never had to run more than five yards. It's not like they were even popping one here or there. It was just consistently, you know, two yards, and, one and, yard, and zero on, yards. And on top of that, we got a couple of bad holes calls and stuff in those situations too which brought plays back so that you know that's tough yeah you know I, I think they tried to run it I think yeah. they made an honest effort to try to run it and they just were not able the offensive line and Brian Dable said this in the post game press conference he said it on the TV show that's going to air on mm-hmm. MSG uh, this weekend or on NBC sorry the mm-hmm. uh, Coach Dable show mm-hmm. and he just said look we have to execute better and that tells me it's it's an offensive line deal blocking up the run game and I think also when you think about the, the, the passing game I think that they had some good passes down the field we had four major drops that, that really cost, you know, major field position would have been in the red zone a couple times. And the first half, you had the under throws on the deep balls. Yeah, so it, mm-hmm. it just, that, that's part of it. Right, I understand that. And my other question was about the defense, and I have one real hang-up with the defense and, you know, Tay Banks and a couple of the cornerbacks. Like, I understand Tay Banks is a good corner. Like, he's in position a lot of the times, mm-hmm. but I just wish he would get his head around. Like, if, you're, if I'm a quarterback, if I'm a quarterback, like, my, if my if my biggest like biggest thing is he's going to knock the ball down, what's to keep me from throwing to his side if he's just going to bat the ball down? Like, there's there's really no there's really no no uh, no real thing that's going to deter me from throwing the ball to his side. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, like, he's got to make people pay for throwing to his side. He's got to start intercepting some ball. Well, one thing is that, that I can tell you is when you're playing against some of the number one receivers in the league, you're going to have a hard time. Like some guys don't show their hands for very, very late. Like when the ball's coming down. Amari so, Cooper did a nice job of that yeah, in the Brown game. I mean, roll tie. Uh, <laughs> uh, we can talk about that too, by the way. That's the game you Saturday see, night. You're going you're to see, because Banks is going to go to the best receiver. Those guys are going to hold their hands as long as they can before they reach for the ball. 
And then when he reaches for the ball, that's when he has to turn. He's going to be watching their eyes, see if their eyes get big, and all this other crazy stuff that I don't do or don't understand because I'm not a DB. But uh, all the things I hear about, he's trying to do. But some of the best receivers in the league, he's going to play them. He's played Jefferson already. He's going to play. Uh, he did pretty good against McLaren. Uh, uh, Mari Cooper, great receiver uh, this past weekend. You know, you're playing against some good guys. And I know he's our number one guy. But, you know, depending on if he's one-on-one out there playing man-to-man or zone, it's just a little bit harder than, than people think to play that spot. And they, even though he's the number one, he's not the greatest corner in the world. He's a really good corner, but he's not the greatest corner. Yeah, and DJ, look, he has to finish plays better because mm-hmm. he's usually in phase. Now, I think last week against Lamb, he let Lamb get a couple steps past him on the sideline there. He could have been a little stickier there. Well, but if you look at the plays that but, Cooper but, made. But the safety is supposed to come over the top. Correct. The safety is okay. supposed to come over the top. He took a terrible angle <laughs> to yeah. into a big play. No yeah. question mm-hmm. about it. Yep. But against Cooper, like Amari Cooper was not creating separation against Deontay no. Banks. He was on top of him, but he wasn't to your point, DJ. And I think he Howard's right. Sometimes it's tough. The receiver doesn't give you a hint as to when the ball's coming. Mm-hmm. But he has to figure out a way to break up those passes. Whether yes. he's getting his head around and knocking it away or if he's just playing his hand through the receiver's hands to knock the ball yeah. out. However he's got to do it, DJ, you're right, because he's in phase, he's in position to make plays for yeah. the most part, but he is not finishing those. And even, look, even if it's not a pick to your point, mm-hmm. uh, appreciate the call, uh, bring Prod down there, Dom, that's mm-hmm. what that is. Thank you. Um, even if he's not um, in, even if he's not picking it off, at least yeah. be in position to knock the ball away because you're allowing way too many passes to be completed when you're there to make the play and you're just not finishing it. Well, again, I, 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 guys, I, I get that, but when the ball's coming like right over your shoulder and they don't make it, they don't give you anything, like, and you think that you're like, I got this guy covered. I am in his pocket. Ball comes up, drops over your shoulder. Some quarterbacks are dropping some dimes. No, it's tough. It's not. It's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> not at all. It's not easy. All right, and look, the wide receiver is the best. You know. I still think edge rushers are the best athletes on the field, but I think it's the combination size and speed and all that stuff. Yep, yep. But uh, the wide receivers, you know, the, the fastest and the most coordinated, gifted players that, that are in the game. So um, it's it's tough. It's Playing cornerback is probably, aside from maybe offensive tackle, is, is the toughest position to play in the sport and quarterback, obviously. Yeah. But it's it's not easy. It's definitely cornerback. <laughs> you think, you yeah. think so? Even tougher than an offensive tackle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because when you when you're playing corner, like most of what's happening, kind of like the tackle, but was most of what's happening is happening behind you. Uh, when you got your back to the guy, you, you don't know what's going on. If you're playing him in a zone, there could be two or three guys in your zone flooding you out. It, it's it gets a little it gets it's hard, and there's a lot of space out there. No, I buy it. <laughs> Ralph in Florida, he's up next. Hey, Ralph. Guys, nice talking to you guys. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Howard, always appreciate you being a legend of the Giants. Congratulations on making the top 100. You deserved it. Thank you very um, much. And listen, my question, I love the Luke Neighbors. Don't get me wrong. I think he's an incredible talent. I'm glad he's on his team. But there's some things that you got to nitpick on him, and I'm not just talking about the drops. Um, John, I know you watched the game over. I probably don't know if you watched it, but on that real route to, to Wondell Robinson, if he runs his route, and run to that Overshone. Overshone has to go around him. Wondell walks into the end zone. Yeah, Neighbors ran his route. He was, a, he was a little bit too shallow when he stopped, yeah, and he gave Overshone he, a, too, yeah. too good of a route. Yep. But he did, it's not that he was shallow. He just walked. Like, he literally walked up the field. Like, he didn't run at Overshone. Like, if you run at Overshone, now Overshone, and then stop, then Overshone, the guy has to make a decision. Go, I go under, do I go over? But he just walked up the field. Like, that's huge. And as far as Daniel Jones on his deep throws, to me, like you said, John, in week two, he was overthrowing the ball. In week three, he was overthrowing the ball. Now he's aiming, and you can't do that as a quarterback. And I, I think Daniel Jones is a really good quarterback. I think he can't get the job done. I think he gets way too much blame for, for what's going on with the team, and it's not fair to him. And, you know, it is what it is. He's got, he makes the money, so I guess he has to be have big shoulders to accept it. Yeah. But it looks like he's aiming the throws now. And what you can't have as a quarterback is aim. You just got to have trust. Throw it up there and let your man and let your player make a play. Now when he throws it, you know, the receiver's got to make plays too. You got to catch the ball. I mean, that throw to neighbors, I, I, I don't know anybody in the league besides Mahomes 
that can go to his left and throw a bullet like that. That was a hell of a throw. Right? <laughs> it was, it was that, that Ralph, you were right. Throw. He has not gotten enough credit for what, and look, people, oh, well, he had Singletary open. Well, Singletary's coming behind him. You're rolling left. You can't <laughs> exactly. turn your shoulders all the way around. It's, a, it's, a, it's very hard to see him yeah, on that play. Never throw across your body. No, that was a, <laughs> Claire, right? Howard, you, you can yeah. speak to it. That's a really difficult throw. In he's, fact, he was running in your direction on that play, right? He snapped it off. It was perfect. It hit him right in the hands. Got to have it. Like, and other things, when we talk about the deep throws, and I said this on the air, and, and I think I said maybe off the air, uh, when the receiver is running down the field and he's looking back and the DB's running with him step for step and the ball's coming at the receiver's back, I mean the DB's back, the receiver usually jumps and the the run the DB runs into him and is passing the field. Yes, yes, and that's yes. like and our, our guys haven't done that as as much. You know, we've seen guys like try to get down underneath and catch the ball, but if they jump back into the guy, that's we can a great ball. question. How many defensive pass interferences have Giants receivers drawn this year, Howard? That is a really good question. I'm gonna see if I can look that up. I'm not sure about that. that that's a that's a great question. You look it up. I can tell you. So and Howard, that's a great. Point. Yeah. Like nobody makes a play for their quarterback. Yeah. You have to make a play for your quarterback. You have to jump back, yeah. do something. Make a play to for do, yourself. Like, even on the play, <laughs> even the play on with, with the interception. Yeah. I get it. But if that's a uh, if that's a defensive pass interference, mm-hmm. we accept that penalty down the field. Mm-hmm. Like he just like Slayton just looked and okay, he jumped up. I'll forget about it. Like not playing the play. Like the play's not over. Go up there and make him jump into you. Yeah. Like do something. And 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 to me, I, I listen. I I can be an optimist if you want to call me. Mm-hmm. But there's something about this team that I just feel is going to get on the road and win a lot of games that nobody expects. Yeah. And I just feel that. I just feel this team's going to get on the road. Yeah. It may start with Seattle, but I just know that. Yeah. Like like John, you pointed out, it's a different one and three team. You see the improvement, offensively especially. Mm -hmm. You see the improvement. You see the improvement in the line. You see the improvement in Daniel Jones' play. Mm -hmm. I just think things are going to start falling into place, and this team's going to be a tough team to beat. And it's always a pleasure talking to you guys, man. Thank you so much. Good call. Appreciate it, Ralph. Good to hear from you, man. So, so yeah, so, John, like, there are teams, like, Mahomes will get it. Uh, Everybody, Allen gets it. Their receivers are going down the field. He throws the ball almost at the back of the DB. And is there? Some people call it. They say, "Oh, it's a back shoulder throw." The back shoulder throw is thrown to the outside and behind him. Yeah, to the side. Yeah, and he when he throws it at the back of the DB, and the guy sees the ball coming, he just jumps, jumps and reaches for the ball. And the DB's got his hands up and he's trying to look back, but he's running over the guy. It's always pass interference. It's not kind of pass interference. It's always pass interference. The DB, he doesn't panic. He just he can't stop instantly. Yeah, and look, I thought the one play where maybe in the game against. Um, Dallas, mm-hmm. the pass, that deep pass down the right sideline to Slayton that kind of hit him in the knee on the way to the ground. Like, if he picks that ball up better, slows down a little bit, and mm-hmm. jumps for that ball, yep. and the guy can run into him, then all of a sudden you're drawing a DPI. Yep, that, there it is. You're down deep in the red zone. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to see if I can. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I'm very curious now as to whether or not they actually have drawn a DPI penalty. I will look that up as we go to our I next call. So. I don't remember one either, which is why I want to look it up. Uh, let's go to Kevin in Delray Beach. He's up next. Hi, Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Hey, guys. How are you? We're good. Uh, real quick, two things. I thought that uh, Brian Dable's play calling. Um, one, I think he's taking too long to make adjustments. And one of the things that I don't think he's recognizing is uh, Lawrence for Dallas got injured his foot. They were second and goal, and he got taken out of the game. And the Giants went right to a running play. They had one pass rusher, Micah Parsons, in the game. Why wouldn't you throw the football on that down instead of trying to run it? Well, DeMarcus Lawrence is also, well, and Kevin, in all fairness, DeMarcus Lawrence is also one of their best run defenders, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree with that. That's true. He's very well-rounded. But I just think that's an opportunity where the Giants' offensive line is struggling. And they're built for, they're built for pass blocking, not run blocking, per se. So I think you got to go with the strength. And I think the other thing he does is, like, he'll say, we're going to run the football today because statistics show we have to run against them. Well, it wasn't working. So switch it. A lot of good teams pass the ball to open up the rushing game. We're sort of saying, we're running, that's all we're doing, and we're going to go with it. And you had, I forget which line, but one of them had admitted that they were blocking the wrong people. Mm-hmm. To me, that's coaching. 
No, I mean, I mean, look, Kevin, they're 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 coaching them up to block the right people, and that's the players executing it incorrectly on the field. Yeah, and like I said, Dallas was was bringing eight guys up, up close to the line of scrimmage because they knew they knew that we weren't going to stop trying to run the ball against them. Right, right. So that's that's my point. Make the adjustment and start throwing the football a little earlier. He's waiting until the second half to make adjustments. We threw the ball forty-one times. <laughs> but we but we threw the ball forty-one times. If he can, I, if he I, throws I, it more I, than that, I then agree with that, yeah. But you, listen, I, I get appreciate it. the goal, Kevin. Your, uh, your, your, little, your phone line's a little crackly there, pal. Sorry. I'm sorry, sorry about that. So when it comes down to play calling, and I'm not you know any genius in play calling at all. I can just say this: uh, in the game that we had, the the idea was to try to go after him with the run because we had seen how bad poorly. They had, you know, taken and played against the run with everyone. In this game, they slid eight guys down, almost nine guys in some cases. I'm like, okay, you're going to have to throw it at two if you're going if you're going to have a chance. Then, you know, you get the crazy play uh, uh, down the field, the big 50 yard catch for them. Now all of a sudden, it's not as easy to keep running the ball. You have to make a big change really quickly uh, to throw the ball. So it's just just the flow of the game and what's happening. I, I, I don't think it was a poorly called game. I think we had some poor execution from time to time. I mean, Brian Dable created three or four plays where mm-hmm. guys were wide open running deep down the field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were wide open. I like the one to Malik Neighbors. Somebody goes, he was running wide open. Why didn't he just lead him? I'm like, they had been leading him the entire game, and it's been an overthrow. Correct. That, 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 <laughs> it's funny, Howard. I it's said the, the same thing. It's the hardest thing to do to That's throw. one of those... I'm making sure this is completed. Even if it's underthrown, I'm making sure it's completed. And to me, also, I tell people this. When somebody's that wide open, they may not should be there. They might not what? They shouldn't. may not have supposed to be there. Oh, I see what you're <laughs> and saying. And then all of a sudden, you see him, and you're saying. like, hey, huh. how deep is he? <laughs> and sometimes, too, when somebody's that wide open, Howard, and you yeah. can speak to this, too, the receiver, because he has so much separation, isn't running top speed either. Like oh, he'll no, start, he, he'll he, start gliding a little bit because he, because he's trying to make sure he catches the ball the, the too. First, so you don't want to yeah, lead him the, too much. Yeah, the first thing neighbors did after he after he got open is he kind of turned around and and put his hand put his arm up, up right? Yeah. Right, but you, he turned around to face him. I'm like, correct. Okay. He wasn't sprinting down the field anymore. Nope. Correct. So now you're kind of like. Yeah, I try to figure out how to get it on him from that distance. All right. so, so good job out of Dom. I found it too. Uh, Sha- Shaquille Griffin committed a defensive pass interference penalty against the Giants in the second quarter of week one for a whopping six yards. <laughs> so that was a six-yard gain. And then in week two against Washington, okay. uh, Noah Idbig – I always I can't say this name – Big Idbignagane mm-hmm. committed a defensive pass into Fierce penalty for a whopping nine yards. Yeah. That gave the Giants a first down. So two they have two. drawn two, but my guessing they were probably going through the back of the receiver on a stop route or something like that to, I, if, to get if, after the if football. It was, at six yards and nine yards, there's probably a hole, hooks, holes right? and stuff for when they're, the ball's coming right to them and they're pulling them down, got the hook around the arm. Or slam maybe, the they'll, they'll pull them down on a yeah, slam maybe, the, something the, like the that. nine yard is probably the same thing, hooking them around the waist. Yeah, but nothing down the field. So mm. our memories were correct that there hasn't been a big defensive pass interference penalty that's given them a, a chunk play. So, and no, nothing the last two weeks. No, Not one defensive no. pass interference penalty no. drawn the last two weeks. So, that's something you got to get better at. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, you saw what, frankly, you saw what the Seahawks did to the to the Lions secondary last night where yep. the Lions play a ton of man-to-man defense. They, including your boy Roll Tide, Terry and Arnold, they were mm-hmm. grabbing and pulling and hugging. And, <laughs> and then the best part, I, I think it was Arnold. There's the one play. Mm-hmm. He gets called for defensive pass interference. He's going, well, why would he have made his pass interference? Then they call the replay. He puts his arm around Jake Bobo <laughs> and literally tackles him to the ground. And he's like, I don't understand. How can you call me for DPI? <laughs> Dude, you tackled the guy after you wrapped his shoulders up. Man, like, it, I don't understand just, what you're complaining about. Man, these guys, when I see these quick, these guys that are quick and making turns and stuff like I gotta do something. I gotta, yeah. I, no, and that's fine. You want to commit the penalty, but then don't like, don't be like, I didn't do nothing. Uh, you know this one, this one. And Howard, you know what that's like? Is, is when we when you block on the offensive line, the best part after you do the hold, and then you do this one. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, that remember, is the biggest, I don't remember too many of them personally, but I've seen guys do that. That, that. that is the biggest tell on the planet. If you're an offensive lineman you and all of a sudden you up. do this, yep. you know what that means? That you means did. you were just holding. Yep. <laughs> That's what that means. You also see it from, from guys from DBs. <laughs> they, you see it from DBs and they let go. Like, but now they're always like, ha, I got him. You can't do it. I'm like, man, 
you're, you're passing the Oh, how many movement. times do you see the, the DB get off the ground doing his incomplete, he's pumping his fist, he's like, yeah, yeah. Turn, and then the flag turn. comes in and you just see him stop and do the shoulder <laughs> slump and oh. He should just do the Cobra. He should just do the Cobra like, oh. I love the Cobra, that's, that's my favorite thing. Yeah, the, I, look. <laughs> Aaron Glenn was from your era. You, yeah. you played against Aaron Glenn. Mm -hmm. He was a physical, bump and run, you smaller guy, yeah. but feisty corner, and that's how he's trying to coach his guys up to play in Detroit. Yeah, and they absolutely. were they were interfering. The, I think there was probably six or seven. I'm going to look that up. I think they're, there were six the, or seven defensive fighting, penalties called last night. They were trying to fight night. it out. But you, you get, that, that's part of like knowing the refs and knowing which which right. crew, crew you have and you knowing what they're going to let you get away with and what you're not going to get away with. Some, some crews let you – have that fist fight a little bit out there when you're when you're playing receiver and DB. And some crews like if you brush by him, his jersey, you know, kind of ruffles. <laughs> <laughs> you did something. So let's see. We had um, we had Carlton Davis with the DPI. Carlton mm -hmm. Davis with the defensive holding. Mm -hmm. Carlton Davis with the DPI. Mm -hmm. Terry and Arnold with the defensive holding. Mm -hmm. Carlton Davis with the DPI. And those were the ones down the field. So wow. that is in terms of pass defense. You're looking at six. That's, that's uh, crazy. Downfield, uh, maybe five downfield penalties. So I think that might have been one on the completion that got that that got declined they, 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 too. Yeah, so took, they took it away. He caught it anyway. It was just. That was a crazy game. Yeah, it was a fun game. Really, really high octane. Great, great. And thank goodness we had that second game because, dude, I got to be honest with you, I, no one watches more football than me. I did not watch a second of that Titan <laughs> Dolphins game. I did not how, watch a second of it. How could you? <laughs> I did not watch oh, a second of that game. Uh, guys, Giants TV is the connected TV streaming app. It brings original video content, game highlights on demand, and direct to big blue fans. It's free on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, Fire TV, and the Giants mobile app. And if you want Giants tickets, they're still available. Go to Giants.com slash tickets season tickets i'm sure they'll let you jump in halfway through and you can get single game tickets whatever limited inventory is available it's giants.com slash tickets you get great membership benefits you can stay connected to club all year round a lot of great stuff go become a giant season ticket holder jose in florida is up next hey jose hey how you doing guys Very we're good, good. Uh, it's just funny to me how uh when the team is winning uh, nobody's nitpicking. Nobody's looking for every anything that that the players did wrong. But when we're losing, everybody's just trying to picnic picnic on every little single thing. That's how it goes. Uh, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, this is the NFL. All these guys are professionals, and they should know exactly what to do. Um, on the defense, they just need to do better tackling. I feel like they're gonna get better as the year goes on. Um, as of right now, only really Drew Phillips has been stepping up um, and, and, you know, tackling guys the way you're supposed to. And on the offensive receivers, they just need to catch the ball. Uh, Daniel Jones is doing a great job um, throwing the ball around to different receivers. And, um, you know, they, they're basically failing him. And they, they're the ones that are making him look bad. Um, you know, in 2007, we had flexible birds, Amani Tuma and Steve Smith, three dependable receivers. Um, in 2011 with Hakeem Nick, Mario Manningham, and Victor Cruz, which were all defendable and which were all catching the balls and at any point could take the ball into the end zone. So I just feel like overall the team just needs to step up a little bit more and play better. Um, and that's about it. I'll take it off the air. Thank you, Jose. Appreciate it. I think, you know, it, some they had a bad game. So, so a couple guys had a bad game. But in, in saying they had a bad game, they really had a lot of great catches or a lot of great plays. It's just like when you get late in the game, you you really need to continue continue that pace you're doing. You can't let one get away from you because when you do, you never know which one it is is going to hurt you. Uh, we used to say all the time that it's about four or five plays in every game to make a decision. Even in a yep. blowout, four or five plays are the ones that decided how it was going to go. And, you know, the four plays we had this time were four drops. And, you know, the, the, the safety misreading or, or overshooting uh, – the receiver for the for the fifty yard catch and run. So I think those you know, those are plays that can make a big difference in the game. Howard, the Giants. I'm going to take the hail mary drive yep. away at the end. Right, the Giants had four drives in the second half. Mm -hmm. All right, the first one was the 77 yard drive. We already talked about the play on third down. It turned yeah. into a field goal at the fourth and three. Mm -hmm. um, the second drive was a three and out. That was that was not a good drive. Mm -mm. Uh, next drive, they had the good punt return. They go 38 yards on 10 plays, and that's the play. That's the drive. We're on a third and 14. <laughs> 
Daniel Jones hits Darius Slayton right in the right in the Bread gut basket <laughs> on a perfect throw on a deep out where there wasn't a lot of space. And Darius said after the game, look, that that's a ball I got to catch. Yep. And that would have been a first down on a third and 14 at the 10 yard line. That's first yep. and goal. The third drive of this, the fourth drive, rather, of the second half. That's the drive where Wanda Robinson can't come up with a slant on third down that hits him right in, in, right, right right in the, in the gut. Chest. Yep. Mm-hmm. To quote Howard, if it was a spear, it'd be dead. Be Correct. A, be a homicide. And then the, the play after that, <laughs> neighbors can't come up with the play on the side. That would have been a really nice catch, but yep. it's still you know, hit him right in the midsection. Hit him right in the hand. And I'm sure Malik yeah. would say it's a ball that he expects to catch. Yeah, absolutely. So those are the those are the two drives at the end of the game where you only get three points out of it. Mm-hmm. But if your guys come up with some plays for your quarterback, and again, the dri- the three field goal drives in the first half, those might be touchdowns if Daniel doesn't un- underthrow some of those deep balls. No question, we're not arguing well, that. And again, underthrow is one way of looking at it, and if you jump back for the ball, you pass in the <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just saying, it so, goes both ways. He's not at fault, or he's not free of fault either. But this is not, I think this is, I think the caller brings up a good point. I think, unlike last year, when mm-hmm. we're just looking at frankly in some games just complete domination and yep. like we could not see a, a way you know for Daniel Jones when the Giants played the, the Seahawks last year got mm-hmm. sacked 10 times yeah like and that was most of those sacks came in the fourth quarter of that game I think six of them did mm-hmm. because in the first three quarters they were basically just running wide receiver screens and getting the ball out of his hands in yep. about one and a half seconds because mm-hmm. they knew they couldn't protect <laughs> so that's not what we're looking at here. It is more to Jose's point, I think. Yeah, we're, little points of execution here or there that are that's not turning these losses into wins. Details, details, details. I, I right. Just, just gonna keep keep on every detail. Let's go to Vinny in Florida. He's up next. Hey, Vin. Hey, Vinny. Chris, how you doing? We're good. We're good. Hey, since Howard's on, before I thought about my comments on the uh, Giants, I wanted to say, did you see that Bama? Georgia game? Of course I, I did. <laughs> I, I think it was the most exciting game I've ever seen. And I'm close to 60 years old, and I cannot remember a game that was more exciting than that. I well, mean... I wish it wasn't that exciting. I would like for it to continue to be a blowout. <laughs> I was saying, like, at halftime, I was joking on, on draft season, which which will pop up later today. Like, at halftime, I'm like, ooh, maybe I can actually get some sleep tonight. And then I decided to stick it out. I'm like, nope, nope, no, no sleep. No. I got to go to the and end. Georgia takes the lead, and it's one play. And they scored touchdown. I mean, that I was like, oh, wow. That kid is 17 <laughs> anyway, years old. Yeah, the, yeah between I him know, and the freshman thing. wide receiver on Ohio State, the, mm-hmm. those two kids, the, when they come out in three years, oh, oh boy, they're, they're going to be good. Yeah, my sister's her son, my nephew, goes to that school, so now she's a big fan. And I was saying, normally parents of kids like that are going to hold their kid back a year just so they can be more physically mature. When they hit, if that kid can play at 17 years old, mm-hmm. my goodness, he's going to be a 20 year old rookie in the NBA, mm-hmm. in the NFL. Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So let me make some points. I am feeling much better about the Giants than I have in years. And and I liked when I saw an interview on with uh, Runyon. He used the words, we are good. We are good. And the confidence that those guys have in that, I don't think the offensive line said we were good last year at any point. <laughs> no. Anyone said that. And, and, you know, he's got the confidence. I just think the veteran line is good for us. Now, I wanted to make a comment about that Hail Mary um, to Jalen Hyatt. Mm-hmm. If he wants to play more football, he's got to go get that ball. His hands were up waiting for that ball to come. And it never reached him because the player on the defensive side took it away. Malik Neighbors goes after a ball like that. That's the difference between good and great. And, and you know, if he wants to play, he's got to go get balls like that. That ball was up there where he could have taken it from the um, defender. So that's my first comment, and you guys can comment after. My second, my second thing is, I like the way Dable's calling games offensively, but I really struggle with five field goals in a game. At some point, you know, this is Dallas. We're expecting them to score touchdowns. At some point, I think he's got to go back to his first game. What was it, the Ravens or the Titans were playing? In the first game of his career as a head coach, mm-hmm. he went to win versus to tie the game. And I think he's lost that because of kind of, you know, the media's killing him and stuff. But I, I, I'd like to see him have confidence in this team to say, hey, I'm going for it. And then the um, next thing I wanted to say was 
the defense needs turnovers. I think they need to be a bit more aggressive. They need to go with a punch. They, they need to have more turnovers. It's just we're not helping the offense in any form this year. Even if we um, play good defense, we need, to, we need to turn the ball over and get field position. And lastly, I want you to say, I think we're going to beat the Seahawks. I really have that feeling. The other day I said that too. I, I have a feeling that they're going to really get their A game at some point. I love you guys, um, and we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate the call, man. Thank hey, Harry, why don't you reply to that? I'm going to see if I can figure out what's going on with okay, these fuzzy right. phones, all right? The fuzzy phones. Yeah, yeah. All right, so first he was talking about uh, Hyatt going up and getting the ball and, and needing more playing time. Hyatt's going to go back and look at that, and he's going to say, like, hey, man, I could have I could have gotten up there and gotten that ball and, could, you know, went up there and competed a little heavier on that. And he's right. You know, that that's just part of it. That, the second he talked about day ball and a play calling, and should day ball be more aggressive, I'm like, when you're, when you're talking about more aggressive than in the same breath, you're saying how – some guys have to go up and get it. And we were just talking for the whole show about how we've had some drops here and there. And this is going to be really part of it. You, you, you're not going to make every play. I think he's calling the plays well, but we got to execute on those plays well as well. And, and the guys all know it. Uh, that you got to go up and make a play. Your quarterback's playing better. They want, your line's playing better. The receiver's got to be all in tune. And I'm waiting for the tight ends to start getting in the mix myself. I'm, I'm really like, like hoping and, and foaming at the mouth so they get those tight ends involved in that. And I'm somehow, some way, I think that's going to be happening probably in the next few weeks. He also said about the defense and take Takeaways. Now, takeaways are luck, I, I believe. I think that sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time. The ball's got to be batted up, or, or you just got to be, the, or the quarterback's got to be under so much pressure. Sometimes he just gives it up. Uh, we played some pretty, uh, believe it or not, some pretty good quarterbacks that played well. Jalen Daniels turned out to be the superstar that, we, that everyone thought he would be as the Heisman winner uh, coming out of LSU. Uh, you had Dak Prescott. If, if you're not hitting him and knocking him around, he's going to be good. Uh, Sam Darnold, who who everybody's been talking about, like you know, he might be the, the leader in, in the clubhouse right now for MVP, which is really weird to say out loud. Uh, and then on top of it, I think lastly, I think he was saying – he thinks we're going to beat Seattle. Well, we think we're going to beat everybody, but you just got to wait and see when the games get played. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I covered it all. Yeah, that was very good, Howard. <laughs> and, and I did do something, unfortunately, that made us lose all of our callers. So, guys, if you're on, I'll make sure we get you back up here before <laughs> the show is over. Let's go to Chris in North Carolina. He's up next. Chris, what's going on, man? How are you? Hey, how you doing, John and Howard? Very good. We're good, Chris. How are you? Doing well. How's everything going? We're doing all right. Okay, listen, I, your phones are kind of crunchy, but I first I have a point to make. And so my first point, and it's, it's kind of important, I think, and I think it's really getting missed. And here's the thing I have to talk about. Okay. My point is I don't understand why in the NFL these crews that are doing these NFL games I mean, they are part of a group because I am part of a group. I'm a fast pitch softball official in the state of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we have to work together as a team, okay? And sure, there's a lot of plays and there's a lot of things that get missed holding, like with me, obstruction, interference, you know, mm -hmm. all these different kind of things. But I really think that that call that that ref made in that game with the Giants and the Cowboys – where that player was pulling the face mask, that's a real bad look by the NFL because you got two different colored teams. You got white and blue out there in that field. <laughs> and you have a command center, and I understand that's not a reviewable play, but I mean, that's, that's just. Well, Chris, looking. the problem is that on the initial call, the guy who made the call did point the Cowboys' way, indicating it was on Dallas. So I don't know how that got lost in translation when it got back to the referee to make the announcement, but it, it seemed to be that's what happened. And look, it's it's it's, it's not good. It's bad. It's not good. It, it, it's just also, I think early in the game they had a play where both officials threw the, threw the flag uh, against Dallas and walked over and they're like, 
what what did you get? <laughs> and they picked the flags up. That now way. Dable said after the game, they told him they had the flag flo- they had the flag thrown for a legal man downfield, and the replay guy said he wasn't downfield, which was true on the thing. But the problem okay. is that there was also an offensive holding call <laughs> on the sideline with the guy holding the back of Flotch's jersey that yep. that that was not called. So it, 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 you're right, uh, but. Like I tell everybody, if we're in a game where it seems like the calls are going against us, on the other side they're like, well, that wasn't too great of a game by the officials. And then, and if we're in a game where the calls seem to be going for you, then the other team is like, oh, I can't believe they're missing all these calls. So I don't think I, – I don't, you know, want to be an official. I think it's a thankless job. And it, it's tough because running full speed down the field – trying to see guys with their feet in, the ball caught, and what you're all looking at and trying to be there at the same time. And you can call holding basically on every play. So I, I, I don't know how they're going to get through with it. It's a thankless job. And so here's my question to you, Howard Cross. Mm-hmm. I'm with an experienced tight end. Now, back when Eli Manning played, he had Kevin Boss. He wasn't a fast tight end, but he really always had an availability to get open. So I feel like the Giants are missing that. With they have the receivers on the outside, but the, their team, they're not able to hit anything with tight ends. And I feel like the Giants need an experienced tight end to teach the other tight ends to be better on the field. What's your take on that? I think they're doing pretty well on the field. I just think. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate the appreciate. call. I think that what's really happening, and I don't think people realize this, that Malik Neighbors is such a talent that. He's just he's open, he's open a lot, and it's like you, you want to get other guys into the play. But if you're turning, you know, and you see the, the 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 secondary rotating that way, and he's still getting open, like other guys are gonna have to continue continuously work to really try to make sure they're wide open, so the, so the quarterback's looking for them and at them the entire time. That's that's the only way to get the ball. Sometimes you got like a, such a you know stud receiver. It's just like you got to be so open that like hey. I saw you over there. I'll be back to you. We're going to run that again. And that's the only way to do it. But the problem is when, when you do it the second time, somebody say, okay, we can't – hey, they, they, I know you're watching my league, but that dude was wide open. Don't do not do not do that again. So you, that's that's the problem. So you have to kind of get it in and get it in when you can. Yeah, and I think you're seeing some – rookie and experience thing from Theo Johnson coming up here or there too like in week three that could have been an interception from Daniel Jones on that one route to the left where he did not run the out Daniel Jones threw the out and it got brought back because of I think it was a uh, uh, roughing the passer penalty in uh-huh. week three against Cleveland um, last week Theo Johnson was moving at the snap on the illegal shift on the fake screen the neighbors deep yeah. pass to Tracy so mm-hmm. look tight end is one of the toughest positions in football to be really good as a rookie because you got to learn the pass game you got to learn pass protection you got to learn the run game you got to learn everything to play tight end so for a rookie it's very tough calm down over here <laughs> but <laughs> I see that look on your face but so I, I think we have to give Theo Johnson some time before he his production matches his the, skill set Theo I, I don't mean to be mean to you or anything. Just study your plays. Get your stuff together. It ain't that hard. John's giving you too much too much rope there. That, I always uh, say tight ends, it's very tough as a rookie to just, do everything. It is not it's any tougher than anywhere else. You learn the plays. You you study. It's your job. You're getting paid to do it. Pay attention. If you, if you can't pay attention and get your plays together and know your stuff, and then that's on you. That that is nothing on anything else. If you're if you got the great enough ability to be in the league, study. And I'm not saying that Theo's not studying. So don't don't take that any kind of wrong way. But you, you can't sit here and say that it's harder on some some guys. Quarterbacks maybe it's hard on. Quarterbacks because they got to read the defense. They got to do all this stuff when the play's happening. They got to know. Okay, this this guy. I got three reads. I, I'm gonna have to start over here because this is shifting. The tight end gets up. He's on the end of the line, or he's in the backfield, and he knows exactly where he's going. He has to worry about anybody else. He knows exactly where he's going. That's it. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let's go to Henry in North Carolina. He's up next. Hi, Henry. Yes, thank you so very much for accepting my call. No problem. I'm a long-time Giant fan. I called in before, but it's been many years ago. I'm going to be brief. I'm not going to stay on the line long. Um, here's my thought, and maybe you guys have got the answer to this. Think back to when Daniel Jones was a rookie, mm-hmm. and his coach, uh, his head coach, was the offensive coordinator at that time. 
Yeah, yeah Pat Sharma. Cool. Yep, Pat Sharma. Okay. Jones had about 30 touchdown passes that year. As I recall, some higher number, a number that far exceeded anything he has had since then. Of course, now the issue then was the fact that he had a lot of turnovers. But he had a lot of touchdown passes. Hmm. And I just don't think that you're going to be a long-term successful NFL quarterback if you don't have touchdown passes. So I'm, the question is, why, yes, you need to cut down on turnovers, but why, uh, since then, has he not been in that area of being able to get a touchdown pass? That's I'm a good question. Thank you, Henry. Appreciate the comment. Look, I think that first year, the totals were inflated a little bit. He had, I think, 13 touchdowns in three games that year. He had a five-touchdown game, a four-touchdown mm-hmm. game, and a three-touchdown game against mm-hmm. three of the worst defenses in the league that year. <laughs> so I think that did kind of probably inflate that first-year touchdown total. Mm-hmm. And since then, quite frankly, Henry, uh, the supporting cast around him has not been very good. I mean, he has not had a true number one wide receiver. The offensive line hasn't been great. Uh, he ran the ball in for a lot of touchdowns two years ago instead of throwing it yep. in 2022 in his big year. Mm-hmm. And this year, they've had opportunities in the red zone. They have not been good enough, and he's missed opportunities on deep balls that could have turned into touchdowns, and he's missed those throws. So has there been enough touchdown passes? No, there, ha- there have not been, but I do think there have been legitimate reasons for that. Well, I, I'll give you that. I think there's some. I know everybody keeps talking about the, the deep ball thing. I think, like I said, the, the first two or three times he was probably throwing it to 40 yards, and guys just weren't there yet. He threw it to him over and over again. Now he's starting to throw it at their back a little bit, trying to create another kind of way to get you know, a positive play down the field. I don't think people realize that if you throw the ball deep and the receivers never underneath the ball, you start to get a little discouraged from doing it that way, and you start trying to figure out how to put the ball more on them, right. which also puts the ball in greater risk. When you're leading the guy and you're expecting the guy, okay, he, he has he has separation. I'm going to drop just drop it out there, and they're going to run under it. And they don't. It, it just gets a little, you know, it's a little discomfortable, <laughs> uncomfortable, I should say, when you're doing that. Uh, as far as getting the ball in the end zone and, sc- and scoring touchdowns, the biggest reason why I think uh, in the last two games uh, he he starts out, he gets down there, and then there's a, an instance of a penalty or a negative play that pulls him back. And if you're playing, it's okay to be in, you know, first and 10 at the 20-yard line or first and 10 from the 15-yard line, but you can't be first and 15 all of a sudden from the 20-yard line and then first and 20. Uh, you know, when you're at the, when you were at the 20-yard line, now you're at the 30-yard line. It, it, it just... It, it you know you gotta everybody's got to do their job when they get down there and make sure you know as we as we used to say heighten your heighten all your senses because everything you do when you get down to the red area is cash you, you're trying to make as much money as possible when you get down there if somebody makes a mistake you're taking money out of everybody's pocket basically in that in that situation you know like I said I said earlier and I probably opened the door on the tight ends I'm sorry guys that I'd like to see a little more production out of tight ends or see some production out of tight ends and then you, we're getting the, the beat down of Theo and we're getting the beat down of, of, of something else and I, I, just, I just think I said you know if you're going to be playing out here uh, in the NFL you have to be available and be ready to go the entire time they're, they're you know I hate to use the term but they're shooting live bullets out here you you got to be ready to go and it, you can't this is not a exhibition game or, or whatever and I think that a lot is lost uh, and it's I'm not a get off it sound like a get off my yard guy uh, but it's a lot of a lot is lost with the ability to practice the way they used to practice uh, a lot is lost with the ability to play in some of these preseason games and really get your get your feet up under you so you can actually see what it's like at game speed because practice speed is fast uh, pre- preseason games fast real games super fast playoffs extremely fast and Super Bowl, oh my God! Like everything is like so much heightened. It, it just keeps leveling up, keeps leveling up. And if you're not really, it, it takes a minute or two to understand what that game speed feels like. If you're not really doing it on a day-to-day basis, like I said, I came from Alabama. I practiced against Derek Thomas and Kenny has been it every day, and it was like, holy smokes, it can't get any worse than this. I show up to the Giants, I get LT and Banks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was pretty much, hey, I'm I'm good. If I, if I I'd see another team, I'm like man, you guys are in trouble. Like, like, what? What's wrong with this guy? I'm like, do you see the guy on the other side? I practice against him every day. So it was like it was just different. Like, and we, and we were in full pads. 
I have two questions for you. One, I, I when I will say this, when I watched Leo Johnson at Penn State, mm-hmm. that's why I had a lower grade on him. Mm-hmm. I did not think his game fee, speed on the field at Penn State matched what his time speed was. You know, sometimes okay. the guy looks like he plays fast or he doesn't. Mm-hmm. But then in the sp- in the summer here, watching him run around the practice field, I thought he did match athletically. So, okay. but that's on the practice field. It's different. So I'm curious to see how he gets more experience, and as, as guys get a handle. They, they, uh, yeah. it, it does help their play speed, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure, 100. percent So let's see as he gets more experience how that works. Second question I have for you, and this is something that I talked about um, on yesterday's show with one of our callers, uh, Donnie from Queens. I thought it was a good conversation, mm-hmm. and we kind of talked about how the league this year is becoming almost more of a defensive league. There's there's less scoring, though we would you would be fooled by last night and the Lions <laughs> Seahawks game. Uh, on that statement but you know teams are playing a lot more two safeties deep right they're playing smaller faster linebackers things like that and I I feel like in your day Howard if teams tried to play that type of defense then like they're doing now you would just load up Howard Cross another tight end and you would just run the ball down their throats and I wonder if Look, some teams have been able to do that. Look at the Ravens with Derrick Henry. They've done that the last two weeks. But the teams that haven't been able to, I wonder if it goes back to your point about not being as not having as many practices and full pads where you're able to be physical on the offensive mm-hmm. and work on your line play, if that makes it a little bit more difficult to have these dominant run games because you're not able to work on that as much in practice. I, I think that the passing, I think basically for every team, the defense has to lead when they first start out. And I think that goes across the league because defenses are complex. You're trying to put entire, you're trying to install your entire offense in. You're basically getting your entire offense installed, and then the next week you're playing a game. You're not really showing anything during preseason. So when you get that week between preseason and the first game, or two weeks now, that's when you're trying to install and look at their and look at the team that you're going to play and hope that you're not playing against a new coach with a new system or whatever. That's what you're hoping for when you, when you come out. That's one reason the defenses are ahead of the, of the offense because you can run anything you want to offensively and I can send a blitz and you just may not be able to pick it up because the guys aren't ready for it. That's one. I think the defensive, uh, the twists and stunts, you test it just to see if they're ready for it. That, that's, that's, that's number two. And the third and the most important thing, you had not really been getting hit. So the guys are determining, can I, you know, you could run by a receiver's time and clap your hands and they'll stop. Because right. they're like, because they're like, they're not used to the whole, the, the game's moving fast, but have, can you get hit? Or are you, are, is everything going to be okay? And the same thing goes with, with – with, that's why you see guys running the ball so well and the offensive lines look so good early on because they're not used to tackling. So they, when you come across the line and I have an angle on you, am I putting my head across? Am I, what am I doing? I, I can't do the hip drop. Or, or Is that a hip drop? I mean, like you got a lot of things going on in your head instead of like, let me just run full speed into them and try to figure out figure it out as I get there. And it just takes time because, again, you know, Carl, Carl to tell you that you watched him practice every day. He was physical every day. He had on his pads every day. And it just looked like a different kind of thing. Then you go out to play, you're doing it. It takes time to get – Kind of in game mode. You'll see better games starting this week. Uh, like you saw the you saw the offensive air show last night. Uh, you're going to see more and more offensive games these next few weeks because now the guys are used to it. Now guys are ready for it. You're going to see better tackling these next few weeks because guys are like kind of in the mode now. And teams will have to run better schemes and learn to do better things. But you're going to see better play because it's kind of like the preseason just ended. I'm curious this week. The bye weeks begin. Yep. Uh, this week in the National Football League. So just real quick before we say goodbye. Thursday night, a good NFC South game. Bucks and Falcons. One team three and one, one team two and two. Bucks. Bucks have been playing well. Uh, the Falcons, they've had they, they should have beat the Eagles a couple weeks ago, yes, they but they have. couldn't. So they, they should be three and one, but they haven't been able to get the job done. First game in London this week. You oh, got yeah. Vikings and Jets. So that'll be a game on, on Sunday morning in that 9 30 a.m. window. That'll be fun to watch. Any other games that note here? Bengals and Ravens. Bengals one and three. They really cannot afford to go to one and four. Mm-hmm. Texans Bills, both teams three and one. That, that should be a fun game. That's gonna be a barn burner. Uh, let's see. What are the games we got here? Oof. It's not a great week of games, to be totally honest with you. Niners, Cardinals, I guess. Packers, Rams, 4 o'clock. Mm-hmm. The problem is that the Rams have a million injuries, so that game's lost a little bit of its luster Browns um, in that game. And then what could be the highest-rated game in, in the league this year, Cowboys Steelers Sunday night. <laughs> Two huge national fan bases. Yep. Um, we'll see if that's better. I believe the Cowboys Giants game on that Thursday night was the highest-rated game 
so far this year, if I'm not mistaken, even though it was on Amazon, I think it was the highest rated game. It was okay. Giants Cowboys. I could be wrong. It could have been the home opener. But um, and then you got Chiefs Saints on Monday night. Now, curious to see what the Chiefs do here. Say what the Chiefs do here, Howard. Do they have to go try to find a wide receiver now? Yes. I think they do too. I'm with you. And they always do. It's not like they haven't done it before. They do it every year. They got Tony one year from us. They have another year. They, I forget the other guy's name they got. They've got one almost every year because somebody goes down. Yeah, they lost Hollywood Brown. Now they've lost – Doesn't you know, they haven't confirmed ACL yet for Rice after all the tests, but that certainly did not look Patrick great. took him out, man. I, I think, Howard, I was trying to remember, <laughs> and you've been watching – you're older than I have. You've been watching this longer than me. I have never – ever seen a, a quarterback, quarterback injure his own wide receiver. Take him out, man. Pat, what's happening? As, as if he weren't having enough problems already. And, I mean, Pat, <laughs> good for you trying to make a tackle on interception and all that, but this is why they usually tell the, the kickers and the quarterbacks. Get off the field. Just get out the way, guys. <laughs> just get out the way. No. Let the other guys make the tackles. Yep. More important to keep you guys healthy than for you to try to go out there and, and, and make a tackle. Yeah, so. that, that drop in the shoulder when your shoulder's worth five, half a billion dollars. And that, I, I think that was his right shoulder he yeah. dropped too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you probably don't want to do that. Half a billion dollars. <laughs> not not worth the tackle, guys. No. Graham Goodall, not, mm -hmm. not worth the hamstring. Not and worth I the said, hamstring. I said to him, like, if, you, if they run it out, just jog out the field. He goes, yeah, right. Then he looks at me, he goes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, this was fun, man. Appreciate right. it. For Howard Cross, I'm John Schmelk. Thanks to Dom. Uh, Pearson, get better. He's he's homesick. He's he's dealing with a little sore throat. I oh, think wow. um, he's struggling right now. So, but he did he did edit draft season this morning, so that'll be going up. And then uh, hopefully he'll be back next couple of days as Dom steps in for him. So we can blame Dom for the bad phone lines today. <laughs> Thanks for being with us on Big Blue Kickoff Live uh, tomorrow. Uh, assuming Madeline's going to be back, uh, she'll be here with Shona Howard tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Make sure you tune in at twelve thirty. We'll talk to you then.